having this decentralized system, uh, I, I think there is advantages to a lot of people that are left out from the you know centralized banking world. Um, and, and that's that's another point. Many of the um, many of the people that weighed in on this bill trying to make, uh, you know, that. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. Cake Wallet is trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you, and supporting us is easier than ever. By typing in MoneroTalk.crypto in your Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman chats with Edward Ra, a New York State Assemblyman representing the 19th District. Recently, a bill was passed in the Assembly to impose a two year moratorium on new crypto mining firms that use a carbon based energy source, essentially, banning companies from setting up proof of work mining farms in New York behind the grid at carbon-based power plants. Ed Ra was one of the representatives to debate against it. We would like to thank the Honorable Ed Ra for being the first currently elected official, brave and open-minded enough to jump on Monero Talk. We have tried getting others in the past. Hopefully this will be the first of many as we explore, expose, and try to help steer crypto-related regulations, especially here in our home state of New York, which often leads the way for other states. We want New York to once again be a beacon of liberty and to transform it from a dystopia into a Monerotopia. Monero Talk starts next. The Honorable Ed Ra. Thank you so much, man, for uh, jumping on and doing this. No problem. It's good to be with you. Yeah, I should mention to all my listeners, I, I personally know you. I know you in another life, in a non-crypto life. Uh, I know you through the political world, the Nassau County political world. Um, so if, if you don't mind, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you Ed just because I'm so used to calling you Ed. That is fine. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to I wanted to bring you on um, because, as you're you're well aware, uh, crypto is uh, becoming more and more on the forefront here uh, in New York State in terms of um, discussing uh, regulations. I think it was just a day or so ago somebody proposed a bill, and you could go into the details of, of exactly what that bill was and where we're at. Uh, but essentially, uh, my understanding is they're, they're looking to regulate proof of work crypto mining in New York State. And uh, New York State, unfortunately, is on the, on the cutting edge for the wrong reasons uh, and is jumping out there and trying to be the first state to, to take such action and regulate the use of, of certain uh, energy, re basically regulate the use of, of, of carbon uh, produced energy uh, for purposes of, of proof of work crypto mining. Uh, do you want to quickly explain what the bill is that was proposed and, and where we're currently at with that? Yeah, so uh, the bill that was proposed by Assemblywoman uh, Anna Kellis, uh, who's uh, from up uh, in the Ithaca area, uh, essentially puts a two-year moratorium on the issuance or renewal of any uh, permits uh, regarding fossil fuel uh, powered uh, plants for crypto mining. So essentially what uh, Greenwich is doing up uh, state where they repower the coal plant with, uh, with natural gas uh, and are utilizing it for uh, crypto mining. Uh, and and actually are you know helping, uh, supply some power to it and and you know uh, doing uh, what they can to actually help with the reliability and redundancy of the grid in that area when there's uh, you know uh, bad weather and and all of that um, and they currently have a an application in with the Department of Environmental Conservation for a renewal of that permit. Um, the, the renewal has been delayed a couple times. I know there were about 1,000 public comments submitted. Um, so the bill, well, it doesn't, it was introduced really in response to that. Well, the way it's currently written, it doesn't directly impact that situation. Uh, they already are in the pipeline. 
anybody else who wants to try to do something similar to this um, or, or, you know, do expansions and all of that will not be able to for two years. So it really is, um, you know, something that's that's sending a message uh, to, to this industry that has created a bunch of very high paying jobs in parts of the state that certainly need uh, high paying jobs and economic development uh, that New York is uh, not a hospitable place for for uh, proof of work uh, crypto mining. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I think I think it's uh, an example of New York being uh, on the cutting edge for, for the wrong reasons. And I think the woman uh, that was proposing that's proposing the bill, Anna Kell, is, is that her name? Kellis, yeah. Yeah, Kellis. Yeah, I think she she even made that point. Uh, you know, it's not the first time that New York is uh, is on the cutting edge, but uh, uh, so unfortunate to hear her say that uh, for for all the wrong reasons. Let's let's just explain it a little bit more. So what was happening was there's there's a company or companies that were coming in and they're basically trying to retrofit old shut down um, uh, electrical uh, electrical facilities. Uh, and turn them into crypto crypto mining facilities. Is that is that correct? And then and basically what the moratorium is, it's it's not allowing you to not allowing these companies for the next two years to to come in and, and do that and use these facilities for those purposes. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it, exactly. It would prevent uh, you know anybody from going and, and getting the necessary approvals to, to do that uh, in in New York State for, for the next two years. You sent me the links, and I started listening. I listened to you know what she had to say, and yeah, I think it went on. The whole thing went on for uh, three or four hours. Uh, I'm not not yeah. finished yet. Uh, I'm going to include some clips in this podcast so people can tune in. This bill is a uh, relatively straightforward piece of legislation. Its purpose is to create a two-year pause on cryptocurrency mining operations in power plants that use some form of fossil fuel and enable the state through the DEC to do a full generic environmental impact assessment during the first year. And then in the second year, it would give the legislature an opportunity as well as the public an opportunity to review the findings of the DEC um, for potential response to the findings from the DEC. Thank you. So uh, I, I just wanna make a, a couple of points. And at the top, I know we've talked about the term ban uh, moratorium and well this is a two-year moratorium that is accurate I think the concern that many of us have and the concern that many of this industry have is that when you have technology something that's so rapidly changing something that's emerging uh, two years is a very long time and if these entities are looking to find opportunities in New York State to create what, you know, as my colleague talked about earlier, high paying jobs uh, are providing access to a financial system that is decentralized and really does provide a lot of access uh, to folks in a, in a way that, uh, you know, our centralized banking systems do not. They're going to look to go somewhere else. Uh, we've already seen just the uncertainty around this uh, causing these types of entities to not come to or expand in New York State. Uh, so I think we do have to realize that many in the industry, while this is a moratorium, do basically feel like it might as well be a ban uh, because they're going to choose to uh, put their operations elsewhere uh, if we adopt this. Now, you know, this is certainly complex technology. Uh, I will be the first to tell you uh, that there are people in this chamber certainly who understand uh, energy policy much better than I do. Uh, and there are certainly people that understand uh, cryptocurrency uh, much better than I do. Um, but there's a couple things here that really concern me. Uh, one is as we're going down this road, uh, and obviously we have very ambitious climate goals, um, you know, and we've go been going through this process. Uh, and, you know, even the, you know, scoping documents that, that, that have come out already don't suggest the ban. They suggest how these things should be taken into consideration by across the board by you know industries that use a lot of energy, uh, but they don't target any one specific industry. Um, and I think it's hard to say we're not targeting something specific here. We haven't done this before for anything else. There are other very uh, energy-intensive industries out there. We're not talking about them. 
Now, who knows? Maybe as this goes on, we're going to talk more and more about this and, and go restrict other entities from using energy. But this is a really unique thing we'd be doing here. Um, and yes, these operations are unique. But we'd be basically saying, hey, you can't go and do these operations and, and, and use, use this energy because you're doing a specific type of, of really data processing um, in this crypto mine. We've talked about so many times energy and the need for energy. And, and you know, many of my colleagues talk about you know, us not having adequate energy. Well, what we're doing here is taking businesses uh, or the idea of a business that wants to produce their own energy for their use and also uh, even give energy uh, that's going to be available back, back to the grid uh, that provides some reliability uh, and, and does it in a way that one of the unique things about this industry is that they can power down uh, quickly uh, and, and provide energy to the grid in, a way, in ways that other large-scale computing facilities can't. Uh, they, they, they can't power down that quickly, you know, in extreme heat or extreme cold or, or you know, or a situation where that energy is, is, uh, is needed on the grid. Uh, so it's odd to think that, well, we're worried that there's not enough energy out there uh, for the public and for our rate payers that we would target an industry that wants to produce their own energy uh, for their use a, a, a in their company, uh, but also... Uh, you know, put energy back back onto the grid that can be taken advantage of. Um, and, and I do want to just note, um, you know, one of the things in, in this bill, in the uh, legislative findings, um, and it's part E, uh, can, the continuing expanded operation of cryptocurrency mining operations running proof of work authentication methods to validate blockchain transactions will greatly increase the amount of energy usage in the state of New York and impact compliance with the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act. So are we really not targeting a specific industry? I think we are. And I think that all of us, uh, when we talk about issues like cryptocurrency and where this technology is, I don't think this is the last time we're going to talk about uh, this issue in many different ways, um, but I'd ask you to go back and look at the history of New York State. We already have a reputation as being uh, very inhospitable to the crypto industry. Uh, we have something called a bit license that drove investment away from this state uh, in, in, in cryptocurrency and, and making investments in our state. Um, and with this, we're going to be further closing the door uh, for crypto mining. Um, and this is a technology, like I said, that provides decentralized access and, and really um, allows opportunities for people in disadvantaged communities that are left behind by our centralized banking uh, industry to, to have access to this type of new digital currency. Um, so I urge my colleagues to really think about uh, the precedent we're setting here and the message we're sending to an emerging industry that is creating high paying, paying jobs and access uh, to financial uh, opportunities uh, for our residents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, what I loved was when you stepped up, you kind of really got down to, to the bottom of it in terms of what I see as as the biggest issue, as as the issue that anybody, you know, any resident of New York or really, really anyone, uh, you know, any, anyone that's using logic should take is that why why go after, you know, just crypto mining in particular? Why are they going after one industry? Um, and, you know, is, is that is that something that we should be uh, OK with, uh, especially as residents of New York? Uh, we, you know, we understand this, you know, potentially understand this, this need for reducing carbon emissions and, and trying to prevent, you know, uh, excessive or inefficient uses of, of energy. But why go after just crypto and proof of work crypto? Why, why not to make it a moratorium on, on other industries and other, other things? Right. And I, I think you did a good job of making that point. Yeah. And I think that, you know, when you look at, you know, the state has set uh, 
the lofty uh, climate goals and all of that. Um, so I think there's a, there is a you know, precedent being set here to go and you know kind of say oh we don't we don't like what this industry is doing. Um, I mean there are other very uh, electric intensive uh, things going on. Uh, you know we're we're a state that's just starting in the uh, space of uh, recreational marijuana use. Uh, marijuana cultivation is a very high uh, energy uh, you know activity. Um, you know and in addition to you know so many other things. And one of the points I think I, I tried to make is one of the unique things about this is, um, as, as you know, I'm sure you know, many of your listeners know, you know, unlike a lot of other major like kind of data centers and stuff, they can ramp down this activity very quickly, um, you know, when there's a situation that that power is needed uh, in the grid. Um, but, but one of the other points I was making was we're talking about not having adequate energy. Well, here's a business saying, hey, I'm going to produce my own energy uh, so that I can power what I need, but then also uh, supply back to the grid. And, and New York State is saying, uh, no, we don't, we don't want you to do that. Um, and and, and the, the last point I'll make, and this is one that many of the uh, entities I spoke with prior to that bill uh, being voted on, was that uh, a lot of these companies are utilizing uh, green energy that otherwise it would just be uh, burned off during, um, you know, during down times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There, 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 there's so many arguments to make. And, you know, I, I've been in crypto for, so, for quite some time and been studying it. So uh, it was a little, uh, a little difficult to listen to, to some of these representatives. You know, I think you went up there, you admitted that, you know, you're, you're obviously, you know, you, you don't study this stuff day to day. You're not, you don't claim to be an expert in this field. Uh, but you made logical arguments based on on what you know. I heard some very uh, basically asinine arguments that were made. I mean, one guy got up and said, "You know, uh, there, there's the uh, we got the in my district. Uh, you know, we we have a the the diamond industry. Um, you know, it, and it's and and nobody no, but yet nobody mines diamonds in New York. But we still have a great uh, flourishing diamond industry." And then in the second breath saying, you know, and that, uh, you know, we, we need to be responsible and we need to, uh, you know, uh, prevent these emissions if we want to prevent the next Superstorm Sandy. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. You just you just skip so many steps in logic and understanding. And you're just you're just I think it's very just irresponsible to 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 kind of make those arguments with obviously not understanding the technology. Uh, so. You know, kudos to you to at least you know. I think you, you you even prefaced it in your you know when you when you when you did talk about things, saying you know you're not a you're not, you're not an expert in the field. But I feel like uh, the arguments made on the other side, it was almost as though they were acting as though they they really understand this stuff when it's very clear that they don't. Um, yeah. What's your yeah, and and just you know so, something to really uh, important point out regarding that. You know, my uh, my colleague, uh, Clyde Finnell from Queens, um, who I, I would say probably understands this stuff as well as if not better than anybody else uh, in the legislature, certainly that I've talked to, uh, had advanced a bill to essentially, you know, do a much softer hand, do a study, uh, bring together stakeholders and, and really take a look at what's going on in New York State in this space and, and what we need to do. Uh, in terms of regulation, you know, something this complex, you can't go regulated without understanding what you're doing. And, and yeah, when you have the members of the assembly and 63 centers, you're not going to get uh, too many experts on this stuff, which is why uh, that approach makes sense. Go bring together a bunch of stakeholders. Uh, and, and I'm sure, you know, you do something like that. There will be some people uh, that are more on the environmental side, people that are on the tech side can come together and, and figure out, um, you know, how we move forward, and, but, but be a state that is welcoming to, to an industry that is bringing really good, high paying jobs. Um, so we actually had passed that bill uh, prior to the budget in March, um, and, and we're hopeful that maybe that was the path forward. Um, but uh, it, it seems like at least in the assembly thus far, the kind of, uh, you know, progressive wing has won out uh, with pushing for this bill to be included in, in a uh, Earth Day pact that was passed this week. So it's passed the assembly. Um, it's, you know, it hasn't passed the Senate, though it had uh, last year, but hasn't this year. 
Um, so, I mean, I would just, uh, just to put up in, uh, any of your, listeners, I would, you know, encourage people to reach out to uh, your state Senate representatives and, and tell them why uh, this is not the right path forward for New York. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the pro? So it just goes to the state Senate. And then if, if it passes there, it's law. Is, is there any other process? Well, it would go to, yeah, it would, if it passed the Senate, and then it would be head to the governor's right. desk uh, for sure. I don't know whether the governor has, you know, uh, to my knowledge, she hasn't signaled her feelings on it, but uh, certainly uh, as a Democratic governor and, uh, you know, a primary coming up in June and all of that stuff, uh, I, I think it's uh, fair to say, based on past practice, uh, the governor would sign would side with the progressive left here. And then my understanding is there was another similar bill that was coming out starting in the Senate that was written. Is is that is that correct? Uh, I, I think you're probably talking about the uh, Senator Parker bill. Um, yeah, I think so. So there's another. Yeah, there's there's really kind of three bills out there. There's the one that I talked about uh, by Clyde uh, Vanell, um, and then there is a the Parker bill is another study bill. It's a it's not quite as uh, broad uh, as um, as uh, Clyde Bill, uh, but it's it's still certainly a softer uh, approach than than a moratorium um, that you know many in the industry see as something that will be a ban because uh, they're going to take the opportunity to, to go elsewhere and and two years from now even if we were to come out and say okay we want we want uh, mining in the state uh, it may be too late. I mean, do do you think this is what the residents uh, of of New York really want? I mean, is is this how how is this happening right now? Is is um you know just kind of what's your your overall take here? Why how, how are we even in this position where New York is essentially uh kind of one one of the worst places for crypto right now? It, it really is. Uh, we could get into the other reasons why. I think you you mentioned it uh, in your testimony when you brought up the bit license. Uh, now we have this talk of essentially banning proof of work crypto mining. How did how did we get here? How did we how did the the what was once the financial capital of the world or arguably you know still is? Why why is it also now the place where you know crypto anybody who's in crypto in crypto industry uh, you know laughs at? It's become the la kind of the laughing stock of of, of crypto. How did we yeah, get? I mean I, I, unfortunately, I think it, it goes along with a lot of our, you know, policies, our, our high taxes, our high regulatory environment. Um, the bit license, I know, was more of an administrative thing that came about a few years ago, but certainly has uh, steered, uh, you know, investment away from, from New York State and now to uh, be putting up kind of a close for business sign with regard to uh, mining uh, is just another step to push away. and. You know, we, we actually, you know, we're in a position that we could be a leader in this um, and, and we still can be if we, if we choose not to go down this this path. Um, and like you said, the, you know, we've we've been the financial capital of the world, but things are changing. We've you know, we've just gone through a pandemic where we see how easy it is for people to work from anywhere. Um, and, you know, to to base uh go and do this moratorium, like I said, two two years might as well be uh, 10 years uh, as far as uh, the opportunity lost uh, to New York State. Who's so who's behind this this bill? But, you know, so Anna, Anna is obviously pushing it. But like, who, who's who, can you give us any insight into who's really behind it? I mean, are there lobbyist groups out there? Is it just like the Sierra Club? Like, where, where is this coming from? This this desire to stop crypto? Uh, I mean, I, I think it's definitely, you know, aggressive push within the legislature. Uh, you know, there they were there were certainly uh, environmental groups that you know, issued memos of support for the bill and all that. But most of the, uh, you know, lobbying that at least I saw was was from uh, the industry uh, lobbying against. It. Um, and again, just to go back, my my colleague uh, Clyde Vanell, um, you know, made his. Uh, really best effort he could at the Democratic conference to try to explain why this is a good idea, you know, and and why, you know, we're better off trying to, you know, go back and, and get some information, uh, you know, and think before we move forward. Um, but unfortunately, it, it seems like it, it was really a, a pro progressive push. And 
I mean, I'll tell you, even within the needs committee, when it went through, that uh, we have ten uh, assembly uh, members that were all against the bill. Um, we got about five Democratic vote, uh, so which was part of what we would have needed to uh, kill the bill in committee. Um, so it seemed like a big deal, but uh, if anybody follows uh, New York politics on a day-to-day -day basis, that's that's even rare to have have something uh, not get uh, a, the Demo all of the Democratic votes really in a committee like that. So uh, there was definitely plenty of opposition, but I, but I think again it's the kind of really uh, progressive wing uh, here. Yeah, I mean, so uh, you know, any anybody listening, uh, any of my listeners that are that are in New York, uh, like Ed was saying, you know, you know, reach out to your New York State uh, senator, and you know, go go to the polls in in November, and you know, make sure you you look into who's supporting crypto and who isn't. Um, if you want to, if you want to see changes in New York, that's really what it's coming down to. Um, one of the things I was surprised too, you know, to hear was, well, uh, you know, these regulations will actually spur innovation because the crypto industry will have to be more innovative in trying to figure out how to essentially do the same things they're already doing, but with using with using less energy, essentially is what they're saying, you know. So using uh, proof of stake instead of proof of work or uh, and once again, I, I just think it's it's just so um, I, don't, I don't know. I, I think it's just so misplaced for for these elected officials to basically suggest that they understand this stuff well enough where they could say, oh, well, can't you just kind of innovate your way out of it? I don't know. Any, any comments there? Is, is that something that's often an argument that is often made by by people that are trying to overregulate that actually overregulation spurs innovation? Because I just thought that was so such a backwards line of thought. Yeah, I think it is. I, th I think I think what it spurs is uh, people wanting to go to another state that's more hospitable. <laughs> um, and I think keeping an industry like this here uh, is what's going to spur the innovation because all the time, uh, you know, they're going to want to be more efficient. They're going to want to use less energy uh, because they'll be doing what they're doing cheaper. Um, so, so they're going to try to take advantage of, you know, new, new technologies and, and, you know, any cheaper energy alternatives that they can get, get their hands on. Um, you know, I, I think over-regulating just, just steers you to, Someplace else where there's less regulation. Um, so, but but it does make you wonder a little bit uh, whether the end game is completely environmental or maybe it is trying to make it, uh, you know, financially uh, undesirable to to uh, have these operations here. Yeah, I mean, crypto is not going away. We we pretty much know that for sure at this point. So it's just New York is missing out and just push pushing the ecosystem elsewhere. Uh, and it's it's unfortunate to see. I mean, so so other than you know guys like you making these statements, um, are there? And you, you mentioned this this other fellow who I should reach out to. Uh, perhaps he, he you said he's a Democrat. He's a, out of yeah. Queens. Okay, uh, he's out of Queens. Uh, I th I get along well. He uh, has a little bit of background in uh, in uh, property law. Really smart guy and. He knows this stuff is uh, better than anybody else in the legislature does. Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans. And if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, gratuitous and Monero. So are there kind of you know groups being formed that are pro crypto within the assembly? Is there kind of an official uh, group that's getting getting formed, or are you guys are, is it getting organized in that way? Um, I wouldn't say officially organized, but there's definitely been you know a group of us that have an interest in the area that have you know uh, on, a, on a bipartisan basis have you know tried to uh, discuss these issues on a regular basis. And really, you know, this bill was on our radar screen. Uh, over a year ago when it, when it first came about. Uh, I, I, I would say the one maybe positive thing is is through a lot of discussion, you know, amendments were made to at least not, you know, the original intention was to uh, stop what was going on uh, with, with uh, Greenwich up, upstate. Um, and so now they ended up kind of 
I guess you could say kind of being grandfathered in, but still there are, there are definitely uh, entities looking at other opportunities that are not going to be able to do so uh, if, if this becomes law. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's definitely, there's definitely, uh, you know, some people that own, uh, you know, an interest in this area and, and trying to find ways to promote policies that will attract business to New York state rather than front away. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, yeah, I mean, the positives in terms of proof of work, proof of work mining, uh, in terms of spurring innovation, and I think you, you kind of mentioned this, is that, you know, it, it, pe people are going to want to innovate and figure out how to obtain energy in, in the cheapest form possible, which is going to spur innovation. Uh, and then it's, it's going to allow, you know... Um, basically provide alternative uses uh, for alternative energy. So uh, lots of times, um, you know, what what the issue is with, uh, you know, alternative energy, things like, you know, uh, uh, solar farms or wind farms is the fact that uh, it's not always a consistent form of energy. So you have to figure out how to, how to utilize it at, at different times. Mining crypto miners is is one way to to potentially do that. Almost almost like replacing the battery uh, is 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 the way of looking at it. I actually, when I was commissioner of engineering uh, over the town of Hempstead, I had proposed that. Um, for the solar landfill that they look into using uh, Bitcoin miners in, in place of, um, you know, batteries. Uh, this was this was many years ago, so uh, it was it was quite controversial at the time. Aaron, Aaron King Sweeney, who who was, uh, you know, uh, didn't really uh, ca catch my drift at the time. Uh, but th th those were those were earlier days. I think things are a little bit more mainstream now, and there's more of an understanding. And uh, I, I I do have hope. I think people are going to start to recognize this more and more. Uh, and it's it's nice to see that it's the Republicans that are really picking up on on the jive quicker than the Democrats, right? I, I it's it's. It's it's interesting to see that. Do you think uh, you know things are going to continue in that in that in that trend where it's kind of kind of becomes an issue that you know the Republicans are 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 more pro crypto than Dems? Is that is that fair to say at this point in, in New York? I, I, I would I would say generally in New York, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean I, I think there's there's opportunities for certainly for bipartisanship here if people just want to, you know, actually get a firm understanding of what we're dealing with. Because one of the other things that said is, uh, you know, I don't think this is the last time we're going to have a legislation about uh, cryptocurrency, you know, so definitely not. it really is incumbent on us as a legislature to put together the structure where we actually um, get information that comes from people who really know what they're talking about. Um, uh, because I think it's it's way too easy to to just a decision uh, not understanding what you're trying to regulate, and and that almost always lead to uh, negative implications. So uh, we talked about the bit license a little bit. Is there any is there any talk there of what can be done? Uh, you know, on, on the state level to potentially eliminate something like the bit license. Um, you know that you know that was a. Something that, that that really came out of nowhere in the very early days of crypto uh, it was back in 2014. Um, you know, it was like right out of the gate. Maybe even yeah, it was 2014. Uh, I forget the guy's name, Lowski. Uh, I forget who who basically spearheaded that. And uh, he he's now working, I think, for a consulting firm that helps people get bit licenses, which is um, you know no surprise there. Um, but is there any talk of Doing things to eliminate the bit license in New York? There's, uh, I, I think that's one of the things that uh, Clyde Mills bill is, is intending to do is make people aware of the full landscape of, of what we have on the books, not just in terms of laws, but but regulating like the bit license uh, in, in New York State and really understand the, that you know, it has driven away uh, investment. So that he actually originally. Uh, put forth a study bill. Uh, me and Clyde actually had a conversation. It's going to be going back. I mean, it's definitely pre-COVID. Uh, three or four years ago, had a conversation. Uh, a constituent uh, who reached out to me was involved in these businesses and told me about it. And I was really, I didn't know much about it at the time. Uh, I remember he had me log on to some type of uh, uh, conference and stream it. And, and uh, you know, the names of uh, 
the uh, Attorney General uh, uh, Steinerman at the time, you know, he was basically booed at the mere mention uh, because of his uh, uh, in in the bit bit uh, license. So, uh, you know, it really opened my eyes to what was going on uh, with with that. Uh, so, I, I think that's the hope that if we were to do something like what Clyde has proposed and, and bring together stakeholders that we would not just we wouldn't just be looking at money we would, we would be looking at the whole picture of what the regulatory frame, framework should look like in new york state uh so that certainly we adopt maybe uh some necessary consumer protections but really uh in the right way so that we can our investment in our state. Yeah, I mean, one, one of the things was, uh, you know, that, that really uh, shocked me was when the, when the mayor, you know, newly elected mayor uh, said he was going to accept his, his check in Bitcoin. And then he recently said, I think, you know, he, he's pro crypto, but not pro crypto mining. Yeah, and uh, once again, it's it's just it's like wanting to you know have your cake and eat it too. It's and I, I just feel you know not to put you in a, in a, a compromising position and ask you to attack the other side here. I'll, I'll you can let me do that, but it just seems to be um, you know that the the left uh, seems to ignore. Um, you know, the big picture and common sense and reality and they, they say things and it's like they want all the good without without any of the bad. Uh, and it's to, to make a statement like you're to be pro crypto, but not pro crypto mining is it's like, you know, I'm pro I'm pro car, but I'm not pro, uh, you know, I'm pro combustion engine, you know, it'd be like saying that with like the invention of uh, the Model T, I'm pro combustion engine, but I'm not pro using gas to to. to to run a car, I don't know. Any any comment there? Is that is that just something that uh, that that we have, that we have to deal with? Is 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 there just a disconnect in in inform Does that ever change? Do we ever uh, you know do we do we start to enter a time where you know uh, we communicate better? People get the full picture, uh, and uh, you know we could you know have have rational conversations about these things as opposed to politicians just making these 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 arguments that that really you know only only just benefit themselves and sound great but it's like you know giving away free soda at the at the soda machine to win the school election i mean what 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 what, what, what are your comments there if you if you if you don't want to comment you don't want to no, I, anything i just feel uh, like you know yeah i mean it's it certainly is a is a you know, strange uh, to make, uh, like you said, it, it sounds good on the surface, um, but, but I think it, it changes when, you know, the overall, uh, you know, electorate becomes better informed as to what we're talking about. Uh, and and you know, people that are in elected office uh, take the time to become better informed about what they're talking about. Because you, uh, I, I always say, whether it's about this or any other issue, you know, we are, as legislators, essentially charged with being an expert on everything and i would hope uh we all realize we're not an expert in everything uh and that's why it's so important uh you know to hear from people that are dealing with with uh you know any given industry and, and understand what the implications are of policies you know it's you know when we're passing a healthcare policy yeah of course i want to hear from doctors and nurses and and yes people patients who are consuming healthcare you know, or, you know, education or wh whatever it is, you know, you know, education, parents, uh, administrators, teachers, you know, you, you want that widespread uh, range of, of perspectives on what the effects are. So uh, most of the people listening to this show, um, you know, they're they're pretty hardcore crypto people. They're uh, I don't know if you know the term cypherpunk or crypto anarchist. You know, a lot of a lot of them align with those beliefs and would say, you know what? Who cares? Who cares what New York's doing? Who cares what bills are trying to be passed? The whole purpose of crypto is is to basically build something that's resistant to government regulation, uh, and you know doesn't matter. Uh, any any comment there on on the technology and those beliefs uh, from people in the crypto community? What, what what's your take? If you don't mind. Well, well, I th I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, at some level. Yeah, you know the the overall uh, concept of it will survive, but that's that's the whole thing that we should be concerned with is 
it'll go somewhere else. Um, and there's an op- opportunity with, you know, a, you know, a, a new technology, uh, you know, I keep going back to that is paying, uh, you know, very well uh, for, for jobs, you know, uh, in, in the state of New York that uh, has many communities that have been economically blessed for a long time. Um, so maybe at some level, it should be more of a concern on the policy makers than uh, people in the crypto space who, who figure, hey, well, we're going to be able to do this somewhere. Um, it, it just may not be New York. Uh, that, that, that should concern us. Yeah, yeah, that, definitely, definitely. It's just, it's just, it's not good for New York. But uh, yeah, like I said, people, people in crypto, especially in Monero. So one, of, one of the differences between Monero and Bitcoin is, you know, they're both proof of work coins. Monero is is one of the older coins as well. It's also proof of work based. Um, but the difference is, Monero is built to only be mined by CPUs. So you know, your computer, your cell phone. Uh, so it doesn't tend towards having these large centralized mining companies where they have an advantage over the individual because they're able to uh, mine with what's called ASIC miners. It's application specific hardware that's built just for the purpose of crypto mining. Uh, and in Monero, it's built in a way where essentially you you can't build an ASIC or the CPU is the ASIC of Monero. And what that what that does is that allows anyone anywhere to mine Monero without permission, you know, from their home, wherever they are. And it allows mining to take place in a way where it's essentially less detectable by governments uh, because you don't have this tendency for things to centralize and for these large mining monopolies to form because it's really just no incentive for them to do so. Um yeah, are 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 you familiar with any of those things? I know that that's getting a little deep there in crypto, but are, are have you um, come across any of these concepts? I, I not not really. I'm, you know, like I said, I've tried to uh, read a little bit here and there, and certainly to, uh, people that are in the space uh, like yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we uh, not I not that much into the weeds, definitely. Yeah, yeah, no, no worries, no worries. Uh, um, just um, yeah, I, I just know that's what my listeners are thinking when they hear these things. They're like, "All right, well, that, that just shows a a weakness or a flaw of Bitcoin: the fact that uh, regulations are able to be passed that affect Bitcoin mining, uh, because you know Bitcoin miners are essentially on the radar uh, because they they tend to to centralize into these large mining corporations." I will say. Uh, just to give you a heads up, so probably, probably, you know, the next thing that that might pop up or will eventually pop up in terms of crypto is, uh, you know, the the privacy coin talk. I don't like to call them privacy coins, but uh, that's what Monero has been labeled as, uh, and I'm sure you'll start to hear that come up in terms of of potential regulation. Uh, you know. Uh, governments uh there there are those that are uh fearful of of true digital cash is what and that's what monero intends intends on is and intends on being uh so do you have any any t- i don't know once again i don't know if you if you've looked into these things uh well enough but do you have any opinion there so you know bitcoin uh, I'm. Sh- I know you're 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 familiar with that to a degree, but essentially, it is it's it's built on a traceable, uh, transparent blockchain. Uh, so all transactions are are there for the world to view. Uh, any corporation or government can can view it. Um, so there isn't this great concern that Bitcoin can be used uh, in nefarious ways because all transactions can essentially be tracked and traced. Uh, as opposed to something like Monero, which is uh, striving to be untraceable and and pure digital cash. Do you have have you yet formulated an opinion on on digital cash and whether or not it's it's something you see as ultimately uh, being a positive or a negative? Well, I, I, I you know the the advantages of of you know, having this decentralized system. Uh, I, I think there is advantages to a lot of people that are left out from the you know centralized banking world 
Um, and, and that's that's another point. Many of the um, many of the people that weighed in on this bill trying to make, uh, you know, that people that are in disadvantaged communities and maybe get left out of uh, the financial world, uh, you know, be benefit from these types of uh, these these types of technologies. Uh, and and I'll tell you, you know, to keep going back to my colleague, uh, Clyde, he did a great video a couple of years ago, but just showing, you know, how many of these like small gigas have these, you know, uh, machines that people are going in, you know, uh, thanks to uh, Bitcoin, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, uh, there is, uh, you know, you know, certain advantages to it, uh, you know, I think both domestically and internationally. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, man. I, I, I don't, I don't want to push you too much. Uh, you know, I appreciate you taking, taking the time. Uh, I thought you did great. Um, you know, when, when you got up there and spoke, I was, I, I was, I was proud to, you know, to know you and, and know that you you know, you found your way to crypto organically and it just, uh, you know, it's, it's aligning with, with your values and you're, and you're out there, you know, fighting for it. So that, that's, that's really nice to see. Oh, Thank you. It's a this is a great conversation, and uh, hopefully, as the state moves forward, we ride on a on a better path. Uh, we're not inhospitable to uh, new technologies. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time. All right. Thanks. Awesome, man. All right. That's it. Thank you, everybody. Hold on awesome. one second. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to MoneroTalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.